Okay, so here we are again. It's like almost three o'clock. And um, it was last or tonight has been so weird that I don't even know. Um, like it's been a different kind of weird that it, it was like am I going into the dream realm, but I'm locked into a realm that I can't get out of. Like I'm being controlled in the dream time or something. It was so fucking weird. And it was like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was definitely not like I was asleep, but not like awake. And then there was even a part that I got up to go pee and I could barely walk. I was like, so out of it. And I went into the bathroom and there was light coming through the window. And I thought, oh my God, it's morning and I'm this out of it. And then I came and laid back down and then um, was, I can't just say sleeping because I was like, still like there was an awareness or talking or something. And then, um, so I was laying there and then, um, I don't know, it seems like, like I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, just weird weird talking like I'm explaining myself to myself while I'm sleeping and then giving myself orders or something like I don't even know how to explain it and so then um I don't know I was turning and turning and then I was like man I bet this is the kind of stuff like oh you have a headache your head is hurting so must be the braid oh I wonder if you're laying on your braid that it's like this whole fucking thing and so, uh, then once I became aware that my head was hurting, I kept trying to get into different positions to try and get comfortable is, um, that is where it, all of my migraines had been coming from after my brain injury. Because before when they put me on all the meds, it all started with this, uh, migraine situation and, uh, at that time, then, they were saying that the migraines were coming from this scoliosis, all this jacked up part of my neck, and um, it was causing spasms, and it was giving me migraines. And so then, you know, so you got to take that. And if you don't want to take their stuff, the prophylactic stuff, then they'll treat you like shit. I thought, like, you're just an addict. You're just a drug addict and stuff. So, of course, I was, like, um, very... I don't know, tried to be Miss Perfect or something on medical standards. I don't know. I don't even, that, that girl is like, the girl who I was, I was, you know, the girl who I was. It's not like, like I can have empathy for her and compassion for her. I can understand her motivation, but she did some dumbass shit. <laughs> no doubt about it. When we're driven by impulses and, the, you know, when we're on the autopilot is what I will say. Because that's when you're lower chakra. And, you know, I just, uh, a little bit of explanation, even though I know some people know what I'm talking about, is um, in the chakra, it has, um, it's like an energetic kind of thermostat. And so, when you have a lot of... Um, pain and trauma that you hold on to you hold it down in your root chakra in your um sacral uh what is that called you hold it all down low in this lower chakras and so it's like two lower chakras root chakra and uh something uh so anyways you hold all of it down there and when it, you're holding it down there you're on autopilot you aren't you're, you're just so reactive because you haven't dealt with this stuff. So it's just, you go through life reacting. And so you're just on autopilot. This person does this automatically. You do that and you don't stop and think about it. That's why I keep talking about like where you got to stop and think about things. You got to stop and question yourself, notice yourself, try and understand yourself because then, you know, you have to see these other sides of yourself and witness your own toxicity. Like, there's so much stuff that we think, oh, it's them, it's them, it's them. It's like, oh, I'm, I've also got issues. <laughs> like, 
act. Uh, so we all have issues. And some people try and hide it more. Some people think you can hide it with makeup. Some people think you can hide it if you just bare your ass. Some people think you can hide it with more cleavage. Like everybody's got something that they think they, they can hide from. It, yesterday I was getting this, I don't even know if I said this already, but I was getting this strong thing about, you know, I'll see these girls on TikTok and stuff just trying to bear it all. They just want to bear it all. And I was doing one of the hair videos or something and showing the transition. So the transition is documented each week on there. And so, um, people can, you know, see for themselves. And, uh, this, um, okay, let me see. Um, oh yeah. Cause somebody saw me and said, I didn't know you had all those tattoos. You should lead in with the tattoos. And, um, it just had me thinking about how many people like, yeah, that would be, if, if I just wanted attention, if I just wanted attention, you know, yeah, I could do that. Like, I don't feel like I need, I'm, I don't feel starved for attention. It's, it could seem very strange to people because I'm, I live alone with my dog but I don't feel starved for attention like that. And, um, and I was thinking a lot of those girls, cause there's this one that is just like, man, it's, it's rough to watch some people as they, I don't know. Some of the stuff is rough to watch and, um, just bearing more and more and more and just more, I don't know, clickbait kind of content or something. And it's just like, oh, it's so cringy to me. And, um, you know, these people are trying to get attention any way they can. Trying to, like, I'm not sure what the motivation is. But I was thinking, you know, some of us, like how I, you know, I'm just up here trying to talk. Because that is what I have wanted to be seen for for my whole life. Was my mind, my me. And, and uh, man, that feels so emotional. Hold on. It was a huge wave of emotion I wasn't expecting. Look. <sighs> Hold on, guys. Man, I was not, I'd already been thinking about this. It's weird how something will hit you like that. Um, so, the, um, it's the me that gets lost, you know, it is, and it's so weird how you get lost. Like, uh, cause I wanted to even talk some about that. Cause of something Crystal said in the comments and thinking about how easy it is to get lost in your kids. And, and that being such a big part for me, even with my boundaries, cause I had no boundaries with my kids. That was one thing my kids have even said, like they stepped all over me. And, um, and you know, as I've gotten healed and looked back, I see a lot of things. I see a lot of components. It gives you a lot broader perspective of your own, you know, messed up stuff. Don't just, you gotta remember the zoom in, zoom out abilities that you have. You know, you can go way in on one thing or you can zoom out and try and see more of the picture. And more of the picture is going to take away, you know, it's gonna give you more a broader idea, perspective, so you can be less hard on yourself. But anyways, you're, you do have patterns and stuff that you create. And that is a part of a spiritual part of life, of the interactions that you are here. It's like your required part of your trip. And so you have these uh, interactions that are already set up for you. It's all set up. <clears throat> There's nothing that you need to try and figure out or plan. Whatever you're gonna plan was always gonna be your plan. Whatever you do was always gonna be what you did. So, and everything is set up. It all has perfect timing. And even though right now everything feels chaotic, but it's more like, it's more like a fracturing. It's more like 
okay. Okay, like the glass, like I'm saying the glass ceiling. Like breaking the glass ceiling, the firmament. And the HRC said about breaking the glass ceiling. But think about micro, macro. It is like they broke the glass ceiling of our reality. It's shattered. And so all of it, it's like all of these realities. And it is like all of these things turning. That's why it's like this storm. This, uh, this energetic storm. And that's why in the micro, macro, how we see these big crazy storms and why everything is disjointed it's because it is like when you hit glass and think about glass like a frozen pond and then it being hit and fracturing so there's not anything to fear about the disjointed feeling of our world right now and how it impacts us and how it makes us feel super, uh, I don't know, uneasy. It, it's, it's like you got to ride out the wave. Like It's like it's like riding a wave with a shark <laughs> trailing you. It is like, because it's so new of an experience. And it's so hard to relax into. But that is a part of the challenge that keeps coming to the surface to me is this is the that is why it's hard is because you're this is training you're training yourself you're trying to learn how to relax when the things are that's why i said it's all different levels what we're all playing and so whatever level you're at you're going to see this keep happening 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 and so it's so you can it's like you're challenging yourself to get over stuff to figure out what you need what you need to do how you need to take care of yourself and everything is about this finding your balance, your equilibrium, not what do other people think and stuff. That's what we're breaking free from because that has been the chains that bind us is what we, what we, like an expectation of a people pleasing to try and get people like us. And that is also bad toxic behaviors when you're in lower chakra because you develop as you are reactive in life, you also develop these toxic manipulative behaviors and these unseen uh, expectations of other people. Like I was saying yesterday, it's like, because you're trying to get others, you're trying to please others so that they will like you. And instead of being... It's like the the more healthy way is to just be yourself and, and then accept some people like you and some people don't like you. It really doesn't have anything to do with you. It has to do with them inside them. And it has to do with if they have any sort of purpose in your world. You don't need every single fucking person to like you in the world. You don't need every person. Like, and I know a lot of us, you know, we go to jobs and stuff and we feel like, you know, we got to... It, 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 it's so crazy too because it draws people in when somebody doesn't like you it starts making you feel more like you gotta you know what can I do what am I doing wrong what's what's wrong with me and that's another thing that keeps happening on uh, is the date scene keeps falling apart these weird things of people just cutting out on the date and not saying anything one of them even drove the person to the restaurant and then they're sitting at the table go i'll be back in a minute and this was a guy and goes i'll be back in a minute i gotta go to the bathroom and never comes back drove her like she has to get herself home now like why couldn't you at least you know i'm not gonna say man up but person up respond like grow up and go out and say you know i'm just not feeling i'm feeling really uncomfortable and awkward i really would prefer to just go ahead and take you home and go home. Like, I don't know, uh, you know, realize your vibe is off and, you know, be honest with somebody. And that's the part where I talk about being vulnerable. People do weird shit because they don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to go out and be truthful and say, hey, this is uncomfortable. I'm not feeling it. I think, um, you know, we just need to go our separate ways at this point. And, um, can I take you home or did you want to stay out? What did you want? Maybe you want to meet a friend or something. And, um, you know, just be friendly. It's like, but people are all broken. 
and they don't know how to deal with stuff, especially vulnerable stuff. And see how it is associated with boundaries too, to be able to say, this isn't, I'm not feeling it. So I have to take care of me and I have to go home. And so that is, uh, that's where I say this vulnerability and boundaries are very in the, they're like holding hands. And so to go and do those things, those that's kind of what you're looking at. That's the part that makes you super uncomfortable. And you think like to do the right thing is going to be so uncomfortable. But it's better to do the right thing because you're going to feel bad about yourself if you don't do the right thing. And you're going to feel good about yourself when you are more responsible and mature and you can go out and do the right thing. And, you know, be honest and open and be real. And that is the part where, you know, we have all built these characters so that we don't have to be real. So that we could go around. Like, <clears throat> I would say definitely there was Kelly the character nurse. Like, that that became a, a persona. It became somebody who I thought I was. But then I found out that wasn't who I was. And then I had to... It's like... That was, you know, a, a huge thing of breaking down. But the biggest part is when right after my brain injury is when I noticed that. It was like, because it, it was like this, you know, who am I when I when it was taken away from me? Because I had made my whole identity about being a nurse. All my friends were nurses. I'd been working in medical for a long time. I had done, my jobs that I had done was um, hair in the very beginning of when I first got out of high school, I was a hairdresser. And then uh, I really wanted to pursue art. And the um, so that is, um, I was taking a bunch of art classes and stuff. But that is how I got into the tattooing. And then, so I was doing that. But then, you know, my, my, my relationship junkie life was going to unfold. And so I went in that direction and, uh, and then I became a mom, stay home mom. And that is why I know like how you can get so lost in that world. Like you yourself gets lost. I mean, it is like, especially like I was a young mom and I had older husbands that were very controlling and didn't really like me. That was a problem that I had, I'm very familiar with is people getting together with you because they like how you look, but then they don't like your personality. So I was able to witness that for early on in my life. It, and I, I have a deep understanding of something that people are just now putting it together. Like people seriously think like, because somebody looks a certain way, that means that they're a certain way. It's like a good looking person must be a good person. It's like, what the? <laughs> so, it's like, oh God. Uh, I've got so many di different things about that whole thing. <laughs> like, uh, that's a TED talk on its own. But, um, but anyways, so the, uh, the, <sighs> wait a minute, I'm in a storm. Um, is now I'm thinking about a bunch of different things. Okay. So the, um, so I, okay, let me just say about my eyes because I don't want to uh, forget about this again, was so the thing about the eyes <clears throat> I was saying yesterday about this honey drop stuff. And so I was listening to what they were saying and stuff. And, um, and what it, it keeps being this common theme over why we get sick with this is the lack of nutrition, lack of minerals. And so our body's depleted. And then they want to give us lots of these, which depletes more in our immune system. Like it does a lot of putting things out of order. It's like taking all our, our perfect dominoes and just taking them out here, take it, move that one over there. So it just jacks up our system. And so, and then the more you take, the more jacked up you get. And so they, um, so the, they want us on all of the, Okay, all of that stuff. Okay, so anyways, the more that I keep hearing about is like this um, this mucus and stuff. And so I had been noticing, like there was a whole bunch of different things that I started realizing about it. 
about like in the lungs about why it was that people who smoked and stuff weren't getting sick because they cough out all of these infiltrates and these things that come and they have a carrier agent the mucosa that it goes to try and get rid of stuff so the mucus goes there to um it's like when you get poked in the eye and your eye starts watering so inside your body this mucus goes to try and clear the clear the area and so the um so when you have some issue or something you have a, a lot of mucus and the um in in there is a lot of parasites and stuff and so the um so with my eyes in my eyes have the uh, um like a they they broke they they messed them up but in in my understanding with my guides and stuff it was during this time they wanted me to be more focused on my internal eyes than my external eyes so it's like they just have fogged them over and so um but in the physical realm how it went down was um the brain injury damaged my optic nerves which created swelling in my eyes and so then the medical decided they were going to fix it when they didn't even know what the fuck was going on and everything they did was messing them up more and then right before quarantine like i said the other day they had me do this laser treatment to my eyes. And I was so open all the time to medicine stuff. Even even when they kept trying to fucking kill me. I just kept on being like, yeah, well, give them another chance. You didn't hurt me right here. Could you do it? I was like, damn, Gilly. So I went um, and they lasered my eyes. And um, I swear to God, there is like a fucking thing too. Like, oh, you're going to do it for free? <laughs> okay, sign me up. If it would have been thousands of dollars and I would have been like, okay, we'll I'll have to save up for it. But it's a fucking scam, motherfuckers. So anyways, they get me in there and laser my eyes and then they lock the fucking world down. And um, my eyes did not appreciate the fucking laser at all. It hurt too. I would never fucking, I would tell everybody don't fucking do it. So whatever it did, it messed them up more. But I was already having some other things too. I said where it was like the retinal was separating the um or the ret whatever it was it's called uh retin I don't know <coughs> and <clears throat> the um is I was getting these flashes and they said it was like pulling apart but there was this one little edge but then the floaters were increasing and my mom's got all this whatever they she said it's called macular degeneration and hers is um because glycoma everything starts closing in and you don't realize it and it's just closing in and closing in because you can still see the uh you don't realize you're not seeing the whole picture and so that is a part of like when i was falling and stuff because i wasn't seeing the ground anymore and then my torso my my core was so weak because they cut into it so many times and I didn't realize all the damage that was being done to me because I was focused on, I don't know, everything else. And, um, oh yeah, because when I, I was saying about the identity crisis of, uh, you know, when you lose all your identity and you have to reevaluate who you are and that's a process. So, um, but that happened after the brain injury. But anyways, so with the eye thing, see how I just go off. I'm just going to pull back because I don't even know where the fuck I am anyways. So I'm going to pull back to the eye thing. So anyways, when I was listening and they were saying about these honey drops, dries up all this mucus behind the eyes. And that's why I kept saying was it always feels like, uh, and I was hoping that getting the implants out was going to take this, this feeling of like being stopped up, like when you are all stopped up and you know, so I kept thinking that's what it is like my whole fucking face is like mucus or something behind there or something. It's all like spongy or something and stopped up. 
and um and then you know i've got this whatever he's definitely there is something that's trying to be over here now this one is um it's like it's dormant for sure but i think it's weakened and i i mean it was like so much erupting 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 so it really has made a lot of changes on that but it's bumped over to here where there's a dry spot that's trying to come out and it's right up by my eye too so i swear to god we just need to get these motherfucking med beds i don't be so glad when this shit is like we get to the good part so that um so i was thinking okay so definitely i feel like i have this the sponginess behind all of my eyes and all that stuff so i've got to work on drying that out so i'm doing the black seed oil and then um the i'm going to do the horse paste because of the bacteria stuff and I'm still noticing and still she still has some cysts that are still there but i swear to god that stuff is like so I think either I'm, I'm I don't know if I need to increase my amount I'm taking or just longer but I think I I maybe haven't like I think my eyes will improve if I can clear up this mucus which if it's if it's if the mucus is there to get rid of the bacteria which there's lots of damage in there so there's lots of um stuff going on and now there is a a, a new video out called root cause or something like that and it's talking about the damage that's done to us with um root canals and uh, removal of our wisdom teeth and so and that we all are in fact it's like 90 over 90 percent of all of them are all infected like we just are going around with this low grade infection all the time in our mouths and stuff which that is going to increase the mucosa. And that's why I was saying, after I got the implants out, I didn't see a huge change up in here in this part. I definitely saw some changes, like, and in, in some, like, I don't know. I feel better. I feel, feel better. But the this being all stopped up part. And um, so the... Oh, yeah, because of my mom's thing, the macular degeneration. So, mine closes in, but hers is like Swiss cheese. So, she said, you, you, there's black holes all through scattered. So, you can't, there's parts of the picture missing. And she said, sometimes it's somebody's head. Sometimes, like, uh, driving is a problem because you don't even see a car. All sorts of stuff. And it's like, fuck, man. That seems real dangerous. Um... And their solution, of course, is these eye shots and stuff, which I told her, quit doing your goddamn shit. So, the, um, my solution is these long draw, <laughs> drawn out, because, hey, I, I, you know, I haven't solved it yet. I've definitely got improvement and definitely stopped going and getting worse. So, it's definitely improving, but, you know, it's not perfect yet sometimes though it will be all of a sudden super clear and i can see perfect and it's like oh just stay just like that just like that but then it'll start feeling really stopped up and stuff so i'm gonna do the horse paste up yeah and get rid of the bacteria do the uh black seed oil try and dry up all of the mucus at the same time and see what what effect and i'm just gonna do it a lot harder like in the idea that i'm uh killing microorganisms and not just like big earthworms and stuff as um you know i don't know i still haven't had any big worms or something maybe i'm not taking enough to make big worms come out i'm sure a lot of people have fucking going bathroom worms like you know i haven't had that well unless uh, well i'm positive those two things that was three years ago when we went to those med beds. But so on these med beds, because, okay, so the teeth thing, and uh, my wisdom teeth were out, like they took those out the next year, cut my scent, like, man, there has been like an assault on me from the very fucking beginning, man. It was so weird because the other day, like when I was saying, it was like I was in this replay of all these different signs and stuff. And it's weird how you see them different than when you are living them. 
But, man, I was, I was like, fuck, I'm just so bad in the beginning. But anyways, so taking those out and doing these root canals and stuff. So I feel like I've got all this infection. Then the damage here, which creates all this. So I feel like that there is definitely all this infection in here that I'm aimed on. That I'm trying to conquer at this time by natural means. So we'll see. And then um, about, I kind of want to see how that goes. But then I may end up doing the honey stuff Um too and that is some kind of honey from somewhere and you put a drop of it in your eyes and it does stuff but honey has a lot of um, antimicrobial all sorts of stuff because all the natural stuff is good for us and helps us and all of the um stuff they give us is bad for us it's so weird i just saw i don't know sometimes it's so weird when you just think about like we're not even real we're holograms but all this stuff affects us still but that's a part of the the game. That's a part of, I mean, what makes it feel real. And so, you know, uh, I don't know. Because it's like this separating, too, of realizing, well, it's not really real. None of it's really real. And then you're like, well, what are we doing this for? Well, obviously, so we can learn and grow. Because there's lots of challenges about that. All the challenges that are difficult. So that's what you would hear to work on the things that are difficult. And so, you know, like the lower chakra stuff, that is when you are in the um, pain and suffering. And so that is why when you start facing your healing and stuff, that's when you start bumping into your ego and you have to raise up in your chakra. When you get up in your heart, you have to deal with a lot of stuff. You get your throat, you have to deal with a lot of stuff because people don't speak their truth. Like, they can't even freaking be honest in a date with somebody that they don't even barely know. Like, that should be your easiest part. You know, your chance to try something new. You know, this person doesn't know you. They're not going to hold you bound to a certain persona that you've created around them. They don't know you. You know, you can be as abrupt as you want to be. And just like, oh, this isn't working. I got to go. And then people just be like, oh, they're neurodivergent. <laughs> they're weird. They're this. They're that. You know, it's not something that you need to really get all hung up on. Uh, it's you who are judging yourself and holding yourself back from being honest and being truthful. You're the one sitting there just judging yourself. Oh, they're going to think this. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And then you are the one who holds yourself back instead of challenging yourself and being open and honest and forthright or forthright, forthright, I think. So that is, um, and that's where you find your authentic self, you know, and, and you know, there's lots of people who want to keep you trapped, especially people who your friends and stuff of how you build your relationships and all the relationships that we've all built are kind of like out of toxic parts of ourselves. And that's why so many relationships are breaking apart. And people get all broken up about it. But really, you got to let go of things because they weren't in alignment with you. If they were in alignment with you, they would come into alignment with you. But instead, they're breaking apart because you're breaking free. Just like that glass shattering. It's like... Micro macro, that's happening inside of you. It's happening on the planet, but it's also happening inside of you. You are becoming fractured in how you look at things. And that is why it can be really unsettling because there's so many parts of you that you haven't wanted to witness or give, uh, you know, give, uh, give the mic to. You have been so much, uh, most people. Most people are trying to do some type of people pleasing. Even the people who you think of like, oh, they're so angry. They don't give a shit about anything. No, those ones care even more than the other ones sometimes. That's why they get so angry. Because they get angry at themselves for caring. And they get angry because they can't please other people. They just turn it into anger. Where other people, you know, turn it into self-abuse. I'm not good enough. And... So we all have these different characteristics that are toxic for us. 
And then, of course, if it's toxic for us, then we're just going out and we're all being toxic together. So we're toxic to one another. And then when we don't understand the patterns of behavior, and then we just go out and we think, oh, it's the narcissist. Well, a narcissist can't be a narcissist unless you're a people pleaser. So if you're trying to, you know, this codependency, where everybody's out of balance, everybody's trying to play games to make the other one happy or whatever, then that is... Um, it's all toxic. And that isn't in your heart chakra. That's the thing. You haven't worked yourself up to love. That's why I was saying before. I don't think a lot of us have ever really experienced what love is. We've, we've come up with what we think love is. And we've all searched for it. We've tried to find it. But we've never really found that, that peaceful love. It's always been, you know, it's always been in this... It's always been like in the shaking part where you have like the snow globe. It's always been where everything was getting shook up. And now it's like, it now it's like they're going to put the snow globe down and everything's going to go to peace. And then that is where we're going to start finding real love in the peace. Because before everybody was, you know, challenged by their own inabilities to to um, understand themselves. Everybody was so toxic because people were on autopilot, just reactive and had no awareness of themselves. No idea. Everybody honestly thought it was the other person. Well, if that person wouldn't do this, then I would feel fine. It's like, you got, that's where you got to start saying, oh, I don't feel fine because something in me isn't fine. This person is coming to my life to trigger that, to remind me. And another thing too, <clears throat> is my daughter is having all these headaches. And so then she's going through all of the stuff. Well, what about the brain, uh, brain cancer? How many people come in the ER with a uh, headache and have brain cancer? It's like nobody. It was like so rare. How, what about aneurysm? That's way faster. It's like a, a quick onset, horrible headache, and then, then just fall over. It's a, you know, it's like a stroke in your brain. And so the, um, but, you know, we all go into this. It's got to be the worst. It's got to be the worst. And I keep trying to say, your body's talking to you. Your body's trying to get your attention. It's trying to get you to listen. And so you, it, it was like everybody's got to learn how to take time for themselves. And I was still a snoring. <laughs> There's like new people coming and they're like, is someone snoring in there? I can't get over the snoring. I can't hear anything with the snoring. <laughs> That's where you got to zoom in, zoom out. But the, um, yeah, my big old, yeah, and I always appreciate when she's sitting there snoring. And another thing too is that somebody was just doing a video saying that you sleep better when you sleep by your dog and they're snoring or whatever, you sleep better. And it's weird. That could be also a part of why I like to come out here and sleep on the couch and sleep with her. Is because um, I sleep better. I definitely sleep better. And I just didn't think about this, um, the rhythm of her breathing being soothing to my mind so I can sleep. So anyways, um, yeah, she's snoozing away here. And um, so, what was I saying? Something about something. About something. Um, so let's see, where am I? Oh, I will say this cause I'm lost on whatever I was saying was, um, how things are being so weird. Amy was just telling me, you know, things are being weird. And she said that they went on a bike ride and she said it was going all downhill. So while she was going, she was like, oh man, it's going to be like all uphill going back. And so then they turned around and start going back. And she said it was all downhill. She said, how could that even be? And that is the kind of weird stuff that is, I think, happening. Where you just kind of kind of be like, okay, well, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the, you know, not, uh, but, I mean, I mean, I don't want to say thanks for not challenging me. Because that is how that would have come across. But thanks for the gift of a nice, like, drive downhill the whole way. Uh, so, but it, but it is like, um, but that is part of 
like this fracturing of our reality as it like falls apart. It's like, because none of it is real anyways. It's just like, it's like a figment of our imagination. But it's trippy is because we can go into a place. That's what always gets me, like where I'll start seeing like all this bacteria going to a place. <laughs> like we're all bacteria. But we can all go to a place. Um, but okay, like I, I see how like bacteria gathers in a reality where something becomes, something starts to grow and all the bacteria goes there. Just like to be a part of that reality, that's kind of like what the souls, all of the souls go to be a part of that reality. And so that is how a reality becomes like a, a, a more of a reality. But the realities are so much more smaller than how we keep thinking. I think it's because people keep trying to put it all together. Oh yeah, the headache thing, okay. Because people do try and put everything together. But I kept trying to tell my daughter, your body is talking to you. It's trying to get your attention. And this is the thing too, is so it can be a lot of things. This is why each person has to try and figure this out for themselves because there's multiple things it can be. So, um, but your body is telling you that you need to take that time to try and discover what's going on. And, and most people in this society just keep push, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, and don't take time for themselves. And that's why we've got so much sickness and so much aging. And so it is, are surrendering ourselves to the system and so um you know I, but you can't get somebody to do something until they figured out like so that everybody has a place where they hid like and i went through so many so many places where i should have called it quits but you know, it was a process to me of you know the brain injury then the meds making me sick then it was this and then it was that it was like one thing after another now it's like don't fucking touch me well i mean i let this doctor touch me but it was like it's like getting the other more toxic stuff out which that is a kind of um they have these new kind of dentists it's like and they get all this you know like we can grow our teeth back like it's gonna fix all this shit like we'll even have our wisdom teeth back and stuff. We would have everything that's supposed to be there go back. I don't know when those are going to be, but they have dentists who will go do that stuff. It's like, fuck, man. But I know I have the silver, the root canals, and the wisdom teeth. So I've got all sorts of bullshit going on there. And the, and then the eye thing. And, um, and the other thing where I kept thinking um, probably is giving me a problem is that long-term drinking of the fucking saccharine shit that they say stays stuck in you and it's like formaldehyding you as you're alive or something. So those are things that I am feeling like I'm trying to get rid of. So now, anyways, I'm more focused on the eyes, which now I think it's all associated with this whole thing with my nose, the this bacteria, and the eye. It's like it was a breeding ground, and then when when it got damaged, so everything went there, and it's just like a whole bunch because it definitely it just always feels really swollen and stuffy, and so it is. Um, but it was weird because the other day somebody was like. Uh, a couple of people on this video on TikTok were like, oh my gosh, I'm really noticing how much younger you're looking, especially with your eyes, and they're looking so clear. I was like, were they looking like they were all cataracts before? Like, I don't know. Were they looking cloudy? Uh, I, I don't know what, no, I can't see that clear. But, um, but anything, all that stuff is the minerals. And I, I think it's part of the whole lifestyle, too. Like, I really have a healthy lifestyle. I, I, I've never... I've had coffee a couple times in my life. I've smoked a few cigarettes in my life. I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, some pot smoker from a long time ago. Like, I've been smoking 
ever since, you know, the it was getting off the meds at first, um, but also it was part of the glycoma where they're telling me I have glycoma. I'd be like, well, why wouldn't I just smoke weed? And that whole thing about the, these light, when it very first started becoming legal, that was like, it was for cancer and glycoma. It was like, so, um, but then you try and ask the eye doctors about it. Oh, well, you'd have to smoke a lot. So, I, I don't know. Whatever. And now, uh, there's more stuff coming up about that. Because now Biden wants to make it a more criminal. And and then, of course, Donald wants to take it away. Like, because it's a goddamn plant. This is just shows, like, this is ridiculous. But they're fucking overstep. The government overstep. And tell us what plants we can grow and what we can do with them. Fuck off with this shit. This is so fucking ridiculous. But, so, the, um, uh, what was I saying? The plant, man, I'm all over the place, aren't I? That, um, the plants, uh, the, uh, sickness. Oh, the lifestyle. Okay. So, and... I really didn't eat meat as a kid. Like, I've never been a meat eater. I've had meat. I've, you know, I've had it before, but I've never been somebody who ate it. And then um, I ate chick, I ate birds and fish for a long while, but I've stopped eating that, uh, you know, for a long while. And um, even though I did buy a big old thing of shrimp the other day, and they're still sitting in there in my freezer. And, um, they were on sale. I was like, oh, I love shrimp. But I don't know anytime I make them or anything. That's like, but anyways, I may eat them. That's why I don't like to say, I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Because I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow what I feel. Like if I feel like this, then I'm going to do this. If I feel like that, I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to follow every impulse. I think I'm going to stop and think about it. Like I don't think it was that crazy impulsive to buy the shrimp. Even though right now I'm facing a crazy impulse of Thing about this kitten <laughs> I had the pig thing the dog like uh and, and does Stella even need a friend I don't know maybe it's just me and her and, and that's why it's meant to be not a kitten to come or a puppy or a bird or a pig or whatever maybe she doesn't need that like I keep thinking she does I don't know but there's kittens and if you show that you go to the vet, they're giving the kittens away. And so, and they're little gray. And I had said, oh, I want a little gray kitten. And I was picturing a little gray and white striped one because when I was a little kid, that was the first, I don't know, I must have been like five. It's like a very big kind of memory. I remember getting the kitten. It was the cutest little tiny thing. It was gray and white striped. And I, of course, I loved it right away. And then it had distemper and died, it, like died the next day or so. It was very traumatic, <laughs> this kitten thing. And then I uh, ended up having another cat later that stayed with us forever. Stayed stayed with my dad, too. <laughs> so funny, he stayed with my dad. Um, but Tigger, it was a huge, giant, big black cat. And then I had other cats as an adult. But anyways, that one as a kid, and it stayed with us forever. I had that one. But anyways, the other little one had died. So I was like, oh, I want a little gray kitten. And um, so these little kittens were gray. My neighbor sends me a thing off Facebook. Oh, there's little gray kittens that they've got three little ones that they want to. If you show you go to the vet, they'll give you one. And, um, and then all of a sudden I was like, the brake squeal. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. And I start looking around the house. I'm like, oh, shit, it would jump up there, knock that down, it would jump on there. Oh, fuck be scratched oh god damn it jump over there oh fuck I'll jump on the kitchen counter I don't have much counter space like I start going oh I'd get my plants and go potty in the plants like oh man do I really want that uh and the smell of litter boxes and I gotta get that and then you gotta buy litter all the time I was like oh do I want that oh man I don't know I was like okay this is uh, I gotta I gotta stop and think about this because that does feel impulsive like to go and run and get it because there's like man there's a lot of on the cons section right now the pros were like oh well you know maybe that would make Stella happy mm. 
I don't know if she can be that happy. <laughs> she may be just bitchy. I don't know. She's a bitchy bitch. So, uh, anyways, on the lifestyle thing. the um, And I do, like, things that are, like, movement every day. Like, use your weights every day. Uh, is it kind of a challenge strengthening yourself? So, making some challenges. Not just getting up and moving, but you can do that. Like, it would be still very effective if you haven't done that. Just getting up and doing some jumping jacks, doing some jump roping, sit-ups, some push-ups. If you can't do all that stuff, because that's hard, then you can do some easier stuff. Like, starting out with yoga is really good, I think. But um, the doing some kind of movement where you're focused on your body and focus on movement, your breathing, and all that kind of stuff. It pulls you into yourself it's like necessary to keep in balance so that is taking time to yourself because you know that's the part where people are out of that they don't do that and I'm just lucky in my healing that that has got to be a part so I can say yeah you gotta do this and then um not drinking alcohol like that seems to be such a big thing and, um, but I'm not saying like, oh, I, I, I'm not, I don't drink. I'm, I'm above that. I don't drink because like, if I go and I'm around, um, you know, if my daughters are all like, oh, let's get a margarita. And I would be like, yeah, I'll have a margarita, you know, and I would drink some of the margarita. I'll probably maybe would drink the whole thing. I don't know. And, uh, or if they said, oh, let's have mimosas today. Let's do a brunch and have mimosas. I'd be like, oh yeah, let's have a mimosa. Cause I've had so many fun uh, memories of doing that kind of stuff with them. And so, yeah, like, it's not like you can relive that moment, but you can still enjoy those moments to me, but everybody gets to do their own thing. But anyways, so I'm not going to sit there and say, well, I don't drink. I don't ever drink because like, I don't know. Maybe I would, maybe I won't. I don't know, but I don't drink regularly. I don't get alcohol and keep it in my house and drink it. But not to say you shouldn't. I mean, I used to. But I wasn't in, in good a shape when I did. I didn't feel as good. So, it's more like that to me. I feel better not drinking alcohol. And I like how my clothes fit better. And um, and then in the lifestyle thing that I think has value also is um, one thing that my kids always think is so strange. But eating on a small plate, I swear to God, it's something with your mind. And that's not to say that only eat on a small plate. Sometimes I have a big old fucking serving dish like uh, I'll have something out of. But, is, um, uh, but on a small plate, not only is it easier to eat, but I don't know. There's something about your mind when the plate is full and you eat all that you'll feel more full if you fill up a big plate and you eat all that it's like there's a mind play that can go on so that can also be a way like if you're trying to figure out ways to lose weight and you feel like fuck i keep doing all this stuff it's just little things like that making little changes and, and uh, one thing too is eating slower is a really good and um drinking a lot of water that because that makes everything blow up bigger in your stomach and it makes your stomach feel way fuller just like how those people go get their stomachs clamped and stuff you know, just eat stuff that would make it feel more full uh, but another thing too and i don't know when somebody has stretched their stomach out extreme like and if it's just like all floppy in there but if you've just stretched your stomach out some and you can stretch it back in you just have to go through not eating for a while, make it just like suck back in on itself. But a lot of these people leave it all stretched out and then they go get it banded and like cut half of it off. It's like, I don't know that that would be good. Even though we're not flesh and blood, I think that there's people who've got a lot of side effects from that Dr. Frankenstein shit. So I would just try and do it more natural, just like go through a period of um, fasting to try and shrink your stomach. And, um, and that is another, also another lifestyle way is, uh, intermittent fasting, like have periods of time where you don't eat, where you let your body just use what it has 
uh, you know, so to me, it, it feels more natural to eat more as the day begins, as, you know, like as the sun comes up, even though I've already been eating cookies and it's dark as fuck out. But as your day begins, is you eat more of the stuff and then as the day starts to wind down, you wind down on your eating. So most of your eating is more in the midday than it is in the evening. And so I think that's better for you. So there's basic things like that. But one thing too, that I was trying to say um, to my daughter, like about the headaches and stuff, I said, when you take time to yourself to heal, you will notice that other things will come up. So those are the things your body's trying to tell you. Like you, it can be so many different things. Like with that headache, it can be, you know, you are uh, trying to please others. You're not facing yourself. You're not facing the facts. You're looking at things in a different way. You're going too fast and not taking time to rest. Whatever it is, your body's trying to tell you. So then you sit down and then the waves of information come in to get you to have these realizations. So, but, 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 but see, that's the, the plugging yourself in or unplugging yourself so that you have this time to be able to reabsorb information. And that is what is making people sick is because they don't take that time. They just are trying to get from one thing to the next and don't stop and take the time to plug in and have their recharge or recognition uh, so that they can live, you know, like if, if your body's telling you, you know, that you've got to do this and then you're sitting there thinking about it and you're like, oh my gosh, I've really got to start doing that. Then you're going to start doing it. And then, um, you know, you'll start healing. You'll start being like, oh man, I haven't had a headache in a long time because you dealt with whatever it was you're supposed to deal with. And that's the same thing on your weight, your heart issues, your blood pressure, cancers, sickness, all these different things, the autoimmune stuff, all the different things are there to teach us to, so we can learn. And there's all these uh, weird kind of uh, diseases, anomalies, genetic disorders, uh, all sorts of things that people are having right now. Like uh, really unusual things. And that has a whole aspect in itself challenges of you know them not knowing and stuff but everything is like you can go to yourself and it doesn't have to be a medical diagnosis you go to yourself and yourself will show you what it is you need to heal and then things will heal and I'm not saying all these people with these crazy genetic disorders and stuff can heal those by facing themselves because sometimes some of these things that's your journey that's what you come into experience. Maybe you're paving the way for something. Maybe you're bringing attention to something. Whatever it is, that is your storyline. So it isn't like where somebody's doing it wrong. Well, you know, if you were closer to God, you wouldn't have that. Well, you know, you're just not, you don't, you're not in Jesus' favor. Uh, so that's why you've got this problem. It's like, no, that's not. It's because you have different experiences because you learn and grow from the different experiences and they have to do with what you need to learn and grow from. And, um, and then what I was going to say too, was about with, um, with the whole thing with like your being a parent and, um, with your kids and stuff and like what, um, Crystal was talking about of, uh, um, her daughter's just gone to camp right now. But I remember when uh, my last daughter was going to prom. She went to go um, to prom, you know, and took pictures and she left or whatever. And I sat there crying and crying and crying. And it was so weird. I was like, oh my gosh, all my kids are grown up now. And I already had a lot. I was already out of my own life. I wasn't still stay at home mom, but I was still, um, I've noticed through my healing how much of myself that I tried to give up to please my kids. 
You know, it's like you give up yourself to please others. And and I became a mom at such a young age. And like I was saying, like what these more controlling husbands that were like, no, you need to change. You, you know, I, I always needed to be changing. And um, we all put those pressures on each other. You know, I'm not just saying, oh, well, they're evil as they try. No, it, it, we all have things to learn, you know. And so, um, but there was always, uh, you know, somebody who was much smarter than me who would tell me like, you know, I was doing something wrong or not looking at it right or whatever. But anyways, there was definitely a part of me that, uh, like a lot of, it was like my self-esteem was, it was like I, I gave each of my kids my, a little bit of me and so they could break me really easy. They could take that and crunch me up real easy. And, and so through my healing, I had to take those parts back. And and that is very uncomfortable to to find yourself when you've lost yourself in your family. And I know a lot of women do this kind of thing where you do get lost in your family about what everybody else could you get lost in this you know what is a mom who is mom what is mom and um in in my case too is you know like my kids have an idea and then you're trying to please these different ones well she wants this kind of mom she wants this kind of mom it's like it, you get lost in there and so there's so much of this journey and this healing is it's all about finding yourself you know, and in the in the search and the journey is where you have to move through the chakras because you can't stay in the pain and the suffering in the lower chakras. You have to move out of that. And and like I said, that's all autopilot. You have to move into more of a, a direct approach on life and a more deeper understanding of yourself and less impulsive and more thoughtfulness in how you approach, how you deal with situations and people and, and stuff. And, and it isn't even like with the kids and pulling these parts back to myself, it wasn't like they tried to take them. It was, I was, you know, handing them over. Like I couldn't like myself if my kids didn't like me. And that was a lot of pressure. That's a, yeah, that's where you start getting diagnoses and stuff. Like, they'll tell you you're borderline and stuff. And, um, but it, they're really, you just got to learn how to love yourself. And then you start seeing, oh, these people are holding on to these parts. And some of them are holding on to broken parts of you. And then resenting you for it. And it's like, you got to uh, heal all the parts. Even when some people are still held back, holding on to that broken part. And you've moved forward you know that's for them to realize like what am I holding on to what am I doing you know we all have to get to that point in our own journey in our own healing you know I'm standing there like what am I doing here what am I what am I doing why am I doing that what am I trying to accomplish here why would I why would I care about this why would I not care about that like all of that is that it's, it's like you are coloring yourself in. It is so much like going from this density to this caricature of yourself, this this animated, colorful version of you, the part of you that is comfortable with being you, not the part that was trying to hide in this perfect shell of a being and then feeling bad about yourself because you couldn't be something that you're not. I just saw this um, video of Kate Winslet talking about how she was so irritated um, when they were photoshopping her and how people would make such a big thing about her weight when she wasn't even, uh, I mean, she was a little bigger than some of the other actresses, but she wasn't ever fat, but they would make like she was so obese, like and make fun of her and jokes and stuff like that. And... Um, that is, that is harsh. And look at how they do that with the beauty. Like she wasn't even a big woman or anything. And so that affects other people too. And um, it, like it affects our whole society. And um, 
what was that? Because it was, um, I don't know, I think it was a different video. Because it was another thing about a body thing. And the girl, who was that? Because it was saying something about people trying to look like her. And, oh, oh, yeah, okay. So this was a video where a girl was talking about, uh, oh, you know those videos where it shows this dress fitting this girl. And then you go and you buy that dress and you think that dress is going to look like that on you. It's not going to look like that on you. It looks like that on her body. It doesn't mean it's going to make your body look like her body. Where people have this idea. And this is, this is a real thing too. Because it's also with hair things. I noticed it when I was a hairdresser. It stressed me the fuck out. Because people would come in and they want you to cut their hair to look like this thing. But they would think... That when their hair was cut like that, they were going to look like that. And it would still be them. And I went through this from the other side, too. And, you know, going in and thinking, oh, if I got my hair cut like that, I was going to look like that. It's like, well, what's wrong? That still looks weird here. <laughs> you know, like, it, um, like, there's a lot for us to come to into ourselves, man. But the... um but this whole thing where people want their haircut to look like somebody so that they'll look like that. And it doesn't work that way. And so they do that also with clothes. And so they think that they can go buy this or that. It's going to look like that. But it's only going to look like that if you have the same body, the same body type. And we all have different body types. That's why I was saying even about clothes. I think it's going to go way more into where we're going to go and have clothes made for us. And stop trying to get clothes. Oh, oh, that's a really cute dress. It looks really good on her. And then thinking, you know, and then people go and spend all this money and they put it on. And it's like, this does not look good on me. And then they get upset with themselves. And it's like, it's not supposed to be that way. You know, these, and that is a part of their whole thing with these influencers too. And they're setting their body trends. And there's a bunch of weird stuff again, still going with this Kardashian thing. And, um, I don't know, but she's part of this setting these trends and stuff, so they're going to fall hard, but the pushing people to feel bad about themselves and go get surgeries and stuff so that you can look like this, and it is, you know, that's the toxic way to go. The healthy way to go is to be like, well, I don't need to look like that. I just need to learn how to love myself and dress my own body. What does my body look good in? What does my hair look good in? What does my face look good in? It's weird too. Is um, you know what? I kept thinking I was so strange looking. Like in my mind, I kept thinking I was so strange looking when I was younger, and all I could see is these giant cheeks and have these things playing in my head where people would be like, would meet me in person and be shocked that I was so skinny. I'd be like, well, I, I, your head's so big. I thought you were really big. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it was, um, so anyways, I had like this, um, vision. And so anyways, this person did this video the other day and said, uh, let's do a trend. Everybody put your high school picture of what you look like then and what you look like now. And I was like, oh, that is interesting to see, like, especially in this world where all these people are changing their faces so much with all of this, uh, poison and stuff to show this other side of society like you don't really look that different as you age really and um so I went and I got the yearbooks it was a big endeavor to I'd climb up there get them got them down I was taking pictures of them and um I was like oh my gosh I look so much the same how did I keep thinking I look so different it's so weird how we do not see ourselves the way that I, it's weird, it's so weird. How it really was an unveiling to me, and um, and I was thinking, uh, you know, how I was always so thought I was so strange looking, and um, I'm, I'm not even kidding how strange looking I thought I was. <laughs> I, I I just have these conversations come into my mind, and I think, oh my gosh, uh, so um. But when I started doing these videos and, and I started seeing my own self, I started uh, liking how, I, I don't know, something where my eyes 
and uh, my smile. So it was like my eyes would smile when I would smile. And then I started being like, I get now why people would say like, oh, you look so good when you smile. Oh, smile, you look so pretty. Now I get why people say that. Because when you watch yourself, then it's like, oh, you do. You look so, and it was um, seeing that and it kind of giving me this idea of like, I don't know, like this fairy face or something like Tinkerbell, like when you smile in your eyes, um, and, and that's when I started being like, oh, I have a nice face. I like it. Like it, it sparkles when I smile. And, um, so seeing things that you find that you like about your face and, and, and you can't find it when you're comparing it all the time. Cause the only reason I would have been so hard on myself was because I was always comparing it. I was always like, I'm not good enough. I, I need her nose. I'd look so much better if I had that mouth. If I just had those eyes. And now I'm seeing so many people do videos like that where they're like, I saw this girl crying because um, she hates her face so much. Why Why did she get such a horrible face? And her face is so fucking normal looking. <laughs> like so normal looking. And it is, she's so upset. You know, why couldn't she just have better eyes? Why couldn't she just have a better nose? Why couldn't she just have a better mouth? And, but I've been there. I completely get where she's coming from. And that that feeling, though, comes from you comparing yourself. You looking at someone going, oh, I, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Oh, I, it, it's because her nose is, look at how good her nose. And, and, and the thing is, it's because everything fits. And that is where we see ourselves as being disjointed because we are not in balance and we don't see how things fit. Because then once I could start seeing, once I started becoming in balance, I could start seeing like, oh, my face fits. I used to think, like if I drew a picture of what I, like, that's what, I, we should all do that. We should all draw a picture of what we thought we look like. Especially after you heal, what you thought you look like is very different than what you do look like. And it is because all of our faces fit together the way they're supposed to fit together. It's just like we get thinking like, well, if I had a different nose, that nose, would, I would look better. If, if my eyebrows were just a bigger, a bigger, I would look better. If my eyebrows were lower, I would look better. If my eyes were bigger, I would look, you know, we all get in this idea, but, but why? Why is it we think we are supposed to look different? Why can't we just come into this like, this is what we look like. This is who who we are. This is what we are. And see, like everything does match. The colors, like everybody's trying to change their coloring. And you have your hair and your eyes and your skin tone all go together. So whatever it is, that's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, you have all these people. Oh, we have so many people right now. I'm going redhead. Oh, so funny. I knew that was coming too. You could just see it coming. <clears throat> it's so wild how you can see this stuff coming before it gets here. But anyways, um, you know, it's going to keep, I don't know. It's going to keep being sloppy for a while, I guess. I don't know. It, it, I would think when the thing it changes abruptly, which there is... um. I saw a video of like this Russian because uh, the woman's talking Russian and she's showing her sky and it is like a mothership. Then I saw another video of people saying that there's a bunch of motherships. Maybe that's going to be the thing. And there's a bunch of uh, uh, ships that we don't want, like warships all off the border of Florida right now. So there's a big drama going on there. And that also, think about, you know, if there was, um, well, like, the frequency. I know there's something with the frequency. I know there's people who think, like, there's lots of monsters in the sea. But there's always been monsters in the sea. That's the thing. There's always been. Like, it's just, like, now people are going to wake up to it or something. <clears throat> I saw a footage of this big, a picture of this big shark with a big giant bite mark on the back. And it was like, what can make a bite that big on a shark? I was like, I don't know, another giant shark, another big old monster. There's all sorts of big fucking things. Think how big the ocean is. So, of course, there's going to be big giant things in it. And creatures of all different types. I mean, just the creatures that we have out 
are out. Oh, and I saw a footage of a guy who caught a pigeon and was showing these feathers and it was doing this iridescent kind of thing like those animals that that other video was showing that they found in some jungle, supposedly. I don't know. I think that that is a part of like how things are going to change. And some of these videos of these babies, these babies being born. I saw one that was six months old out driving a little car. There's ones that are doing letters, sounds, re like it's, it's crazy. Like there is a whole group of advanced uh, kids that are being born. Like it's going to move. <clears throat> they're, they're definitely there to, to push the crowd forward. Like how we're all going towards this. It's like we're all crossing the bridge to get to this other reality. And there's like, they're kind of like coming up the rear to keep the push. Like there's people that are leading, which is an uncomfortable place to be in, in a world that wants to keep conformity. But there's the people leading and then there's all the people who are kind of looking in all different directions. But like I've said, that when this event happens, it's going to get everybody to start looking more in one direction. There'll still be other ones that are confused and not quite convinced. Because that, man, there's so many videos of these women, you know, tell, tell you how to age, get this fucking retinol, get this injection, like all that stuff. So that's all going to be stopping. But the, uh, so there's still people who will be very locked into that kind of like wet direction. But there's a lot of people, because it's going to be so uncomfortable for them to make the shift. It's like they think they're on the front lines right now, but it's almost like they're going to go to the rear of the line. That's so funny. Because it is, they do think that they are on the forefront of like leading us into aging. But it's like you're leading us into something that doesn't exist because you don't take care of yourself and you don't realize that you've got a mineral deficiency and you're just trying to get us to all accept it. <laughs> like, but anyways, that is out of ignorance. Like they don't know yet. Once they know, that's why they'll all of a sudden be at the back of the line. Because then it's going to be a big shift. But the people who are more confused and more open and willing and wanting a new direction to go, that is when they're going to be a lot. It's not going to be so chaotic. It's going to be way more of people direct directing themselves in a in a in a in a way that they're going towards. It's going to be about towards health, independence taking care of themselves, taking responsibility for themselves is going to be in all really positive things, but that will be going in that direction. So it won't seem so chaotic right now. It's just like everything is falling apart. It's like the glass is shattering. And so everything is falling apart and everything feels disjointed and, and it feels weird. And our whole reality is even sleep. Everything is just weird. So, um, Anyways, you just got to keep riding out that energy and just keep yourself kind of just sane, you know, keep reminding yourself, like, no matter how weird things get, that you're still okay. <laughs> it's still okay. It's just, it's going to feel like there's nothing really to hold on to. It's like, it's, it's like... It's like, it's like this letting go of everything gives you nothing to hold on to. And that has a discomfort, but that is where you find your healing. But then all of a sudden, when there's this powerful surge in energy, then all of a sudden it's going to give, well, it's going to give so many people direction, but that gives you a grounding. That gives you something to hold on to, something to focus on, something to head towards. And there's still going to be lots of shifts as this goes. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of shifts. Because even though we're going to go towards this independent on food and agriculture and stuff like that. There's still going to be, as we go forward, I just see it as like, it's going to be like more cumbersome. Like we got, we got things to do. Um, you know, there's going to be. 
I don't know. There's going to be such an openness in like galactic travel. Like, you know, like you could, you could sit and do your garden or you could go to the inner earth and go travel around. Like it's going to be kind of like that. And so, well, what do you really need to keep yourself going? Well, you just take this little mineral pill and you don't need to go and eat. But then you may want to go to another place and see what they eat and eat what they eat. You know, it's going to be, it's just going to be stuff that's different. Food, it, the way that we've been eating, the way we've been living is just going to be so many shifts. There's going to be so many changes, but it's going to, it's like we're going to go on steps. Even though there's going to be big jumps, but it's kind of like, I see like a stream and all the people trying to jump over it. And it's like, just think about like when you see all the people, how everybody has their different approach. Some people run and jump. Some people just jump. Some people just like uh, go over. Some people try and step on things. So that is like for humanity, there's going to be a lot of different takes on it. So it's all, it's all, it's going to keep feeling like uncomfortable for a lot of us because there was such a sense of conformity like, well, this is just the way it is. This is the way it is. But now we're breaking into, you know, that there isn't a set thing. There's nobody there to tell us, you know, this is the way it is. Because then it's like, well, why would you be the one telling us? Why wouldn't that guy tell us? Why has why it got to be, why would we got to do what you think? And that's why all this stuff is going to break apart. And I saw um, uh, Donald's getting a bunch of attention on him. And, um, then when he starts talking and he starts talking about closing these borders and doing this and doing that, see, there's, um, I, I, I swear parts of that is to get his followers to question things like, you know, well, I don't know. It's like, we're going to isolate and segregate and imprison you all. And we're going to be in control of how you move and where you can go and stuff like that. And that, you know, it's got to come from somebody who they love in order for them to start being like, well, I don't want that because uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's it, something because we're, we're not going towards that. And we're not going towards just having all these leaders. Everything is going to break apart about that. And so some of the things he says to me is a part of the breaking apart. And I don't know, it's always going to hurt the people who are holding on to it with, for dear life. You know, they are all sure, you know, he's going to get back in and save the world. But he, the only thing he wants to do is shift us into independence. And we can't go just full independence. We'll still go into communities, but it doesn't need to go bigger than community. And, um, that is, they got too, too big and too much in control and started, I mean, they were taking over worlds and killing fucking whole tribes and shit, you know, and all these tribes and stuff were all different groups that started spreading out. And then, you know, it was the, all the mixing and stuff where people became different uh, different tribes. Like I shared some videos, um, where people like there's some breakdown of like the DNAs and stuff of where like Middle Easterns, where the Egyptians come from, where to, you know, that kind of stuff. And so it was all these different, uh, movements and who, who slept with who, what kind of, who took over who and stuff like that. So anyways, um, but they were always out there trying to destroy, uh, isolate, destroy. So anyways, uh, we're not going to go into that. Like, well, we're, we're in America, um, our flag and all this stuff. No, it's going to open up because it's not even going to just open up to our world. We're going to keep opening to where it's like, this is a universal the, the galactic opening. It's like where we, you know, can go into the inner earth and things are going to, we're going to see things aren't all where we think they are. It's just realms and realities. And even in uh, the same kind of realms, you can have different realities. And so, I don't know. There's just a lot. There's a lot to open your mind to. There's a lot going on. 
and you just got to keep, you know, riding it out and whatever things come up, just work on, you know, your stuff. And a lot of things are going to be coming up about trust, trusting the universe and trusting who you are and everything's okay and stuff like that. So anyways, just, um, keep going with the flow. Was there something else? I don't know. Uh, maybe if I if I even finish talking about everything, I don't know. Uh, I think I did. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I, I'm sure I said enough. I've been talking an hour and a half. So, anyways, just remember, love yourself, to love everyone, and have a loving day because it's up to you. And I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.